All right, how's everybody doing today? Hotep. Hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecturer, writer, and historian. So it is Tuesday, January 7th, 2020. And we're live. Hope everybody's doing well today. Share this broadcast on your Facebook page. Invite your friends to tune in also. All right, Happy New Year to everybody. So, some of you all saw my uh, Sunday night show from January 5th, 2020, the African History Network show, and uh, we talked about uh, Trump launching strikes against um, uh, Iraq and killing the Iranian uh, General Qasem uh, Soleimani, and uh, talked about some other topics, but one topic I did not get a chance to talk about was the annual Kwanzaa crawl that takes place in Brooklyn, New York, okay? And this is a great, great story. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that I covered this. Now, I've been talking about this for the past four years. And this annual Kwanzaa crawl um, brought in $250,000 to African-American-owned businesses in um, the New York City area, okay? And this is something that we can... Uh, engage in and do in our own respective cities okay we can do this for Kwanzaa but we can also do this at different times of the year all right so that's what I want to talk about here uh, so everybody share this broadcast on your Facebook page and then also African-American business owners post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast and we'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network we have a uh, special promotion going on for a few more days we have a few spots left Buy one month, get two months free. We have special pricing right here, uh, right now for the new year as well. And we'll promote your business in our various Facebook Live broadcasts throughout the week, uh, our YouTube videos, and we take your 30 second, 60 second commercial and put it into the audio podcast of our, our broadcast and also my Sunday night show. And we're on eight different podcast platforms like iTunes, Castbox, FM Player, TuneIn, etc. Okay? All right, so. Email us at customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com for more information. We can get you up and running today. All right, so um, I, I saw a number of articles about the Kwanzaa Crawl for uh, 2019. It took place December 26, 2019. It always takes place the first day of Kwanzaa, which is Umoja, which means unity. But the Kwanzaa Crawl uh, embodies the seven principles of uh, Kwanzaa, whether we talk about uh, Omoja, which is unity, whether we talk about Kuji Chagalia, which is self-determination, uh, Ujima, uh, collective work and responsibility, uh, Ujima, cooperative economics, Nia, purpose, uh, Kuwumba, creativity, and Imani, faith. So blackenterprise.com is a really good article. Annual Kwanzaa crawl brings $250,000 to black businesses in New York City. This is from January 2nd, 2020. And uh, in the article, it uh, also the root.com had an article about this as well. But um, we know that Kwanzaa is the week-long uh, holiday celebrating African-American culture and heritage, and, and Kwanzaa celebrates family, community, and culture. But uh, Kwanzaa is the theme for the yearly bar crawl that uh, takes place in New York City and the neighborhood of Harlem and the borough, borough of Brooklyn. Uh, New York's fourth annual Kwanzaa Crawl kicked off with a ceremony recognizing the holiday's seven core principles of African heritage that include unity, self-determination, etc., as I explained. So, um, as, they're, as listed on the Kwanzaa Crawl website, which is KwanzaaCrawl.com, uh, uh, the Kwanzaa Crawl is a one-day event that brings people of the African diaspora together to support African-American-owned businesses in their communities. Heading into uh, their fourth year, they have hosted over 8,000 uh, Kwanzaa crawlers in the past, and they have expanded from 17 African-American-owned businesses in uh, Brooklyn in their first year. Okay, and I think their first year was... Uh, yeah, 2016, okay, because AtlantaBlackStar.com basically had the first article that I read about this, 
and uh, that was uh, from December 27th, 2016. I've talked about this in uh, my radio shows. I've talked about this in some of my lectures as well because this is a, this is a great idea. All right, now, um, so they started out with 17 uh, businesses the first year, and they, uh, they have grown to over 30 businesses, okay? Uh, and they and, and we know in twenty uh, in twenty eighteen we know they redirected um, recirculated two hundred fifty thousand dollars to uh, African American owned businesses uh, when they had that Kwanzaa crawl December twenty six two thousand eighteen and December twenty six two thousand nineteen they were expected to do basically the same thing if not more. Now the Kwanzaa crawl was conceived by sisters Carrie Cadet who's a comedian, and Crystal Stark. And they aim to demonstrate to uh, the, the black buying power while operating under the seven principles of Kwanzaa. It also brings awareness to African-American-owned businesses while supporting the uh, local black economy in the process. So I saw a video from 2016 that Kerry Cadet did when they, were, when they actually had their Kwanzaa crawl. And what the Kwanzaa crawl does is it combines the um, concept of the cash mob, okay? It combines the concept of the it, it combines the concept of the cash mob with um, Kwanzaa, and she said that they wanted to make Kwanzaa cool again and introduce Kwanzaa to millennials. So they came up with this concept of the Kwanzaa crawl, which goes to um, African-American-owned bars and lounges, things like this, restaurants, and it targets them for this for this day. And uh, basically it takes place for eight hours, okay? If we look here on their website, uh, I'll give you a little breakdown here. Um, the, the event is an extension of their organization, Operation Mobilize, which is a community-based resource for people of color providing actionable strategies to counter the political and economic effects of systemic oppression. And one of these deals with economic empowerment. So what better day to practice something like this than on the first day of Kwanzaa, which is Umoja, which means unity. So operating under the seven principles of Kwanzaa, the aim of Kwanzaa crawl is to harness black buying power establish best practices for supporting the local black economy and bring awareness to black owned businesses. The result is an unforgettable event that promotes unity within our community and demonstrates our power as a collective unit. Okay. So, I mean, this is a great idea. I watch it grown over the year. I watch it grow over the years. And this is something that, um, African Americans can do across the country. We can do it for Kwanzaa. We can do it for Dr. King Day. We can do this for Malcolm X's birthday, May 19th. We can do this for, uh, we can break this up and maybe do it quarterly or something like that. Definitely do it for Kwanzaa, the first day of Kwanzaa. But this is an opportunity to recycle dollars in the community. Okay, so I, I encourage people to go to their website, kwanzacrawl.com to get more information, maybe find out how you can set up a, a, a Kwanzaa crawl in your own community. But this is something I think is important for us to do also during um, Black Friday, the day after Christmas. Because what happens is, is we, uh, many of us are programmed to go on Amazon or go to the shopping malls the day after, not, not day after Christmas, day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday, day after Thanksgiving, and spend our dollars. Right. When we should be recycling our dollars with African American owned businesses. OK, not buying a bunch of junk that you don't need and buying children toys and two, three weeks after you give them the toy, they're going to be playing with the box and the toy is going to be uh, over in the corner with the other toys you bought the previous uh, uh, Christmas uh, seasons. And, and they're not playing with those. But this is a opportunity to actually galvanize the power, the economic power of African Americans and redirect it to our own businesses. So um, what they, I think what they're doing is something that's really, really important and something that we can learn from. It's, it's, it's not, 
see a lot of times when we see a lot of documentaries dealing with economic empowerment or we hear people talking about economic empowerment they're talking about a, a lot of things that are theory right and like once all the stars line up you know and all this happens then you can do this that's not what this is this is the fourth year they've done this this is not theory this is actual practical application okay this is not theory this is something you can look at you can see them doing it you can see how they're doing it we can replicate it okay there's a difference okay so because <laughs> i hear a lot, whole lot of people talk about stuff in this theory and it's going to take 20 years for it to work and all this stuff it's like no no that's not what this is okay how's everybody doing uh we got john ray we've got uh felicia tammy dorothy uh goddess mother william uh yvonne vincent uh twan just a few of the people watching gloria so everybody share this broadcasting and facebook page invite your friends to tune in african-american business owners post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast we'll let you know how you can advertise with the african history network email us at customer service at african history network.com customer service at african history network.com we have a, a few slots left a current promotion uh, for the New Year's buy one month get two months free and we have special pricing for you also so email us today we can get you up and running also if you like this type of information you can donate to the African History Network uh, dollar sign, uh, through cash app dollar sign the AHN show dollar sign the AHN show or through PayPal paypal.me forward slash the um, uh, uh, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show or at our website africanhistorynetwork.com I just posted the information here um, as well, okay, with the links. All right, so let's continue here. Uh, so looking at their uh, website, dealing with uh, uh, Kwanzaa Crawl. Okay, so the founders are Carrie Cadet and um, uh, her sister, uh, Crystal Stark. We go back to their article from uh, Black Enterprise. So I read a few articles dealing with uh, Kwanzaa Crawl 2019. Um, so... The Kwanzaa Crawl, as I said, takes place on the first day of Kwanzaa. And uh, on their website, it talks about how half of the businesses that we collaborate with are women-led uh, businesses. In uh, 2018, they had over 4,100 Kwanzaa Crawlers generating over $250,000 in one day for, for participating businesses. And for 2019, they expect about 5,000 participants to uh, take to the streets to build community and economic power in real time, end quote. So the uh, Kwanzaa crawlers are divided into 65 teams, um, and they uh, are led by, each team is led by a turned up uh, tour guide with music playing, with, with a music playing bullhorn. 5,000 people round robin from bar to bar, in two different boroughs at the uh, same exact time. Teams split up, crisscross, and join up to make uh, bigger ones in an eight hour day full of fun. So when they first did this in 2016, they had 17 teams. They had 17 businesses. It was about 1,700 people. They split up into 17 teams. Now it has grown so much, they have um, basically 5,000 people they have to split up into 65 teams so they they um, target uh, businesses when you do this you want to let the business know ahead of time that you're coming okay for a number of reasons number one you're gonna scare the hell out of people if they see a hundred people just rushing into the business right they, <laughs> you're gonna scare them to death okay so so what they do is is they 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 split this up uh, the the 5,000 people approximately in the 65 teams and it's already predetermined which stores which businesses these teams are hitting and when okay uh, the and the, uh, another reason why you want to give when you do something like this and I've participated in um, a, a black uh, a black business bus tour okay so the million man March alumni association and the African Liberation Day planning committee here in Detroit um, three, I think maybe it's three times a year. It's definitely during um, December. They organize a black business bus tour, and the seven, basically seven African American-owned businesses that they hit. They rent a bus from a black-owned bus company. 
they take the uh, they usually do it the first first weekend of the month okay because black people have more money usually the first weekend of the month right you want to do that okay <laughs> you don't want to do it the, you don't want to do it like the last of the month that's not a good time to do it okay you want to do it the first weekend of the month and uh, they go from store to store when you do something like this you want to allow probably like an hour um, at each establishment something like that you want to let the business know ahead of time that you're coming for a few reasons one so the business can be properly staffed because they don't want to schedule people on lunch breaks they don't want to schedule people on vacations when something like this is happening they want to have like all their the majority of their staff if not all of it depending on how many people they want to have all of them working one two they want to make sure that the store is properly stocked so here it's bar so they want to be properly stocked when, when it comes to food properly stocked when it comes to alcohol but when you uh, when we when the black bus tour takes place uh, here in Detroit you they're, they're hitting retail establishments okay so the retail establishment wants to, they're hitting clothing stores things like this like hot hot Sam's is one of the stores that they hit um, so the retail establishment that's th that you are patronizing they want to make sure they are properly stopped Okay, they want to make sure they have all of their all of their goods, all of their clothing, things like that in stock. They don't want to come and have to and, and they're and they're out of half half of their uh, uh, half of their products or half of their clothing line. Okay, that's not maximizing that opportunity. That's one of the reasons why you want to let them know ahead of time, probably two, three, maybe four weeks ahead of time. Give them a heads up that this is taking place. Okay. All right, and you know I'm somebody I used to manage a Radio Shack for five years, so I I can understand this. Okay, all right, so we have uh, Domica. Um, can we get a list of all black businesses in all four thousand four hundred sixty four four thousand four hundred sixty four cities? And now I love to co collaborate. Um, I don't know of a list of all african-american-owned businesses like that now i do know that you have apps and websites that have directories like blacktradelines.com webuyblack.com uh let's uh, let's buy black 365.com things like that and uh, they have websites that have directories they have apps that you can download that have directories as well um you may want to check also blackenterprise.com blackenterprise.com and see what type of directories they have uh, at Black Enterprise as well. Okay. All right. So let's continue here. Um. So this takes place over the course of eight days. The Kwanzaa crawl. Um, Crystal Stark, one of the co-founders of, of this, said, "Quote: We think it's important to keep the Kwanzaa in the Kwanzaa crawl. We think it's important to keep the Kwanzaa in the Kwanzaa crawl." Be, uh, be, uh, because it's not just a bar crawl because they're hitting different bars they're having fun they're partying she said it's not just it's not just about partying she said so we start with setting intentions letting the crawlers the Kwanzaa crawlers know about Kwanzaa letting them know how the Kwanzaa crawl relates to Kwanzaa and how they can carry out the principles throughout the rest of, of the year and not just a one-day event, okay, which is extremely important because I speak at Kwanzaa events each year. And one of the things, you know, I spoke at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History uh, for the second day at Kwanzaa, Kuji Chagali and Malcolm X Grassroots Movement um, sponsors that day. They organize that, so that's uh, Brother Bomani and Sister Shoshana from Detroit. And one of the things I, I talk about in my in when I when I give my Kwanzaa presentations each year is that the purpose of Kwanzaa is not to be super black seven days out of the year and then just go back to being a Negro or whatever it is the rest of the year. It's to carry, it's to practice these principles 365 days out of the year. That's why it's celebrated from December 26th through January the 1st. So you take these principles into the new year. And this is one of the things that they are instilling into the Kwanzaa crawlers as well. Okay? It's because the way they have this design, it can attract people who don't normally celebrate Kwanzaa, 
but introduce this to them and make it, you know, make it cool, make it, you know, put it into a format that causes them to want to learn more about it, okay? So, uh, one of the articles that I read, it was talking about how they did not, um, uh, Kerry Cadet and Crystal Stark, did not grow up celebrating Kwanzaa, okay? And I read articles from Essence.com, uh, TheRoot.com, and, you know, I'm not a big fan of the Root, but, you know, they do have some good articles um, every now and then. Um, and then also Black Enterprise as well. Uh, let me see something here. Let me see if I can find this one. But the fact that they're able to recycle $250,000 $250, among um, African-American-owned businesses in, uh, in one day like that, I mean, that's phenomenal. So, when we look at the article from The Root, it, it talked about how two days before Kwanzaa Crawl 2019, Crystal Cadet and Carrie, and Carrie Stark, K-E-R-R-Y, shared that although they did not celebrate Kwanzaa growing up, that, the, uh, that, that they only celebrate Kwanzaa now and love spreading its tenets. I was especially interested in how gentrification had affected Kwanzaa Crawl. Kerry Cadet confirms that not only are the black businesses patronized on the day of, they also get repeat business once affiliated with the event. She, uh, now Crystal Stark said, quote, I have been encouraged by the new black owned businesses. Uh, noting that in the four years since Kwanzaa Crawl first kicked off, some spots have closed down, but others have opened up and some have stayed open because of residual business. And although although this is a bar centric event, meaning hitting African American on bars, clubs, things like this, the sisters are clear that it's not all about the party. Uh, Crystal Stark said, quote, we think it's important to keep the Kwanzaa in the Kwanzaa crawl because it's not just about a bar, bar crawl. It's not just about parting, as I stated. So they hit on something important here. Repeat business for African-American-owned businesses throughout the year. One. Two, fighting against gentrification. Because uh, I, I, I read articles about their Kwanzaa crawl going back to 2016. And, they, and they're talking about the increase in gentrification and fighting against this and how some of the businesses that inaugural year of uh, 2016 or 17 businesses, how some of them don't still exist. And this is why it's important, I think, to do something like this, not just for Kwanzaa. It's important to do it for Kwanzaa, but we need to do this uh, three, four times a year, maybe each season. To help support these businesses, expose people to African American owned businesses that either may be new or already exist but you don't know exist. And then this causes you to go through and support these businesses on a regular basis. Not just when the Kwanzaa crawl happens. Not just when the black business bus tour happens. Okay, So, I mean... Once again, I'm in documentaries dealing with economic empowerment, things like this. I do lectures. I host the African History Network radio, the African History Network show. Um, and I, I hear a whole lot of stuff. And a lot of stuff is a whole bunch of theory. And you need a million dollars to be able to make five million dollars and all this stuff, right? This is something these sisters put together that has grown over four years. This is not theory. This is something that we can replicate across the country, in every major city across the country, and even minor cities across the country. Even this is something we can do, okay? Uh, and, I, and I can't tell you how many times people tell me about Dr. Claude Anderson's five-story building, and I ask them how long it's going to take to, to build this five-story building. They can't tell me. You know, so, and I, Dr. Carl Anderson is one of my teachers. We talk regularly. I've interviewed him a number of times. But but I have people coming to me with theory stuff. This right here is something that they're actually doing. Okay? So, uh, check out this article from blackenterprise.com. I'm, I'm going to uh, post this link here. 
And this ties into how African history and culture gives us our foundation. It gives us our values, our interests, and our principles. That influences our economic empowerment, how we engage in economics, the type of businesses we have. It also deals with um, understanding a history of cooperative economics, the co-ops, as, as I talked about before, before Kwanzaa, the broadcast I did before Kwanzaa, and I dealt with the history of cooperative economics. This ties right into that because it helps expose people when we talk about Ujima. Ujima, when we, did, if we actually look at that fourth principle, okay? And one of the reasons why I'm doing this broadcast, they say, well, see, so some people may say, well, Kwanzaa is over with. Why are you still talking about that? Because you're supposed to practice these principles 365 days out of the year. That's the whole purpose. It ain't supposed to. It, it's, it's, <laughs> Kwanzaa is not designed to be African centered for seven days out of the year and then go back to business as usual the rest of the year. This is what Kerry Cadet and Crystal Stark are talking about. Practicing these principles year round. Okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going to go to this here in just a minute. Let's see who we have here. We have uh, Domika. Uh, no, the root is not black on. The root.com is not black on, which is part of the problem. Now, they do, you know, they, I have some disagreements with them. Every now and then, I see some good articles from the root. Um, um, the years ago, they used to have better content. Uh, the root is Hispanic owned. They've gone through a number of different uh, owners. The root is Hispanic owned. I mean, they have some. Some some of the stuff is good. Some of the stuff is not. I'm just gonna say it like that. Okay, I'm not gonna call any names. Uh, but anyway, you know, because I'm not I'm I'm not in the calling names. I'm not in using social media to attack other African Americans. I'm just saying, you know. I monitor about 35 different news sources on a daily basis. I've been reading the route for years, and I've seen a change in the content. All right, uh, Derek, when are you coming to Washington, D.C. again? Uh, you know, uh, this is a good question, Derek. I'm not sure. If somebody wants to bring me to Washington, D.C., um, e inbox me here or email me at customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Um, I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think uh, I may be somewhere in the D.C. area, uh, but I'm not scheduled to speak in Washington, D.C. right now because um, I'm on this Black Agenda tour at Michi X and we laid out, um, we looked at pre uh, 12 preliminary, preliminary cities. I don't think D.C. is one of them. And then I'm speaking in, uh, I will be in Baltimore at the Baltimore Natural Hair Care Expo. I think this is the 19th year of it. Uh, that is the last weekend of March. It's like March 30th, March 29th and 30th, okay, that Malika Cooper does uh, for 2020. So I'll be there. I'll be in Baltimore. I don't know about D.C., okay, but if you want me to come to D.C., email me customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We can make that happen. All right, um, very quickly here, African American business owners. Post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. We'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network. We have uh, some new advertisers also. If you are in the if you are in the market for shoes, but you need wide shoes, you want to visit the Wide Shoe Outlet in Marlin Heights, Maryland. They carry men's and women's shoes sizes up to 15 double E. They carry brands like Naturalizer, Soft Spots. Uh, uh, Rose Homerson, Pro Pet, Walking Cradles, and Easy Street. They have wide calf boots as well as shoes for comfort. Visit their website, simplywide.com. Simplywide.com. They also have a brick and mortar store at 4279 Branch Avenue in Marlin Heights, Maryland. 4279 Branch Avenue in Marlin Heights, Maryland. So you may be in the DMV area. You may be out, you may be on vacation, you may be traveling and realize you left a pair of shoes at home and you need a pair of shoes. Go to the, uh, the, the Wide Shoe Outlet at 4279 Branch Avenue in Marlin Heights, Maryland. They can take care of you. Also, give them a call, 301-702-1401, 301-702-1401. 
Okay, and visit their website, simplywide.com. Let them know you found out about this from the African History Network. Now, it's 2020, and a lot of people want to get their financial house in order, and a certified financial planner, Marticia Patterson, can help you with this. Financial planning is an important tool uh, helping you get and keep control of your finances and, and over time, build wealth. A certified a certified financial planner is a resource who can help analyze your financial situation and discover resources you can use to maximize your success. Marticia Patterson is a certified financial planner with over 20 years in the wealth management industry. She will help you apply proven tools, techniques, and strategies so you can meet your financial goals. What she is offering is a transformative way of thinking which will lead to a successful outcome. You can contact her for a free consulta consultation today. See, don't put this off because it'll be June. It'll be Juneteenth and I'll be down in Atlanta at the three-day Juneteenth Festival by the time you get around to this. So contact Marticia Patterson today. Visit her website, pattersonplans17.com. Pattersonplans, the number 17.com. Or give her a call, 646-552-4384. You've seen her before here. On the African History Network show, you see some of the, the interviews I've done with her. 646-552-4384. You can also email her at PattersonPlan, the number 17, at gmail.com. Okay. All right. Um, let's see here. We got uh, Domika. Okay, she posted the website there. All right. We got Treese. How you doing? You're African American business owners, you can post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. Email us at customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com will let you know how you can advertise with us as well. All right. So, we were talking about the Kwanzaa crawl, right? And this is a great concept that uh, Sisters Carrie Cadet and Crystal Stark came, out with, came up with. It has grown over the past four years as well. Uh, visit their website, KwanzaaCrawl.com, KwanzaaCrawl.com uh, for uh, more information as well, okay? But this taps into um, understanding how it's uh, African history and culture that gives us a foundation. It gives us our values, our interests, and our principles, and it teaches us how to engage in economic empowerment, okay? Because when we look at that... When I show you the pyramid principle, when we look at three sides of the pyramid, and the foundation is African history and culture, the two sides are economic empowerment and political empowerment, this shows us how to engage in the economics, okay? A lot of people say, okay, well, we need to recycle our dollars. This is actually showing people how to do this. It's connecting people with African-American-owned businesses and connecting the businesses with uh, customers also. So this is a, a fantastic idea that we need to do uh, throughout the year as well. All right, let me, um, let me look at some of your comments here also. All right, Felicia. Um, okay. Okay, so Felicia says she shared this information on her page about the shoes. Yeah, simplywide.com. Okay, the wide shoe outlet. Um, and then also this talk this deals with gentrification as well. Now the thing about gentrification, and a lot of people don't know this, is that uh, our oftentimes our pension funds help to finance gentrification. So, and, and I uh, first heard Reverend Al Sharpton talk about this, okay? And, I mean, you know, this is not an endorsement of Reverend Al Sharpton. But, you know, I go with what works and truth, you know, it, it doesn't matter. If something is true, it doesn't matter who says it, all right? I, but I listen to Reverend Al Sharpton's radio show uh, every day, Keeping It Real. You know, I agree with about 70% of what he says Some things... I disagree with, but I agree with this here. He talked about how um, our pension fund dollars, our pension funds are investments, and money managers handle our pension funds. And money managers will then loan our pension fund dollars to developers. Developers will take the money that they borrow from our pension funds. 
come into our own communities and gentrify us out of our own communities with our own pension fund dollars. And many of us don't even know this. So a lot of the developments that take place, things like this, is, is either fully funded or partly funded by pension fund dollars that will loan to them that are our that come from our pension funds. What a lot of people don't know is that you can determine where what type of businesses your pension fund dollars are invested in. How do we know this? Well, if we look at, for instance, in the city of New York in June of 2017, right? I talk about this in some of my lectures dealing with economic empowerment and um, I have one lecture that I do called Lessons from the Film Black Panther. Lessons from the Film Black Panther, Economic uh, Guerrilla Warfare, Political Self-Defense and How to Wakanda the Vote. We look at, um, there was, in the city of New York, you had uh, city employees who divested $48 million in pension fund dollars from privatized prisons because they found out that they were invested in privatized prisons. And, and this is something that a lot of people don't know. A lot of people are invested in privatized prisons. It's through their pension funds and through their 401k dollars. And they don't know this because one of the things I deal with in some of my presentations is, is how we finance our own dehumanization and don't know it how we finance our own dehumanization and don't know it. So if we look at this article here from New York Daily News, uh, nydailynews.com, NYC pension fund to back out of investments in private prisons. This is from June 8, 2017, but this is what they actually did. And I saw Reverend Al Sharpton interviewed uh, some people regarding this on uh, Politics Nation on MSNBC after it took place. New York City's pension system has become the first in the nation to fully divest from private prisons. Controller Scott Stringer will announce Thursday. Now, just that, that's just the opening line. So if, if, if they said this is the first pension system in the nation to fully divest from private prisons, then just that opening sentence should tell you that the other pension systems in the nation that are invested in private prisons a lot of us don't know this right the city has sold off about 48 million dollars in stocks and bonds of three private prison companies according to the controller's uh, office okay um, the controller at the time was Scott Stringer this was after a unanimous vote from the funds trustees okay so those uh, three prisons are Core Civic, which used to be called Corrections Corporation of America. They are the largest owner-operator of privatized prisons in the country. Geo Group, which, which, which used to be called Wacken Hut, and G4S. Okay, These are basically the three largest owner-operators of privatized prisons in the country. Now, the overwhelming majority... Of about the now it's about 1.8 million people in prison. It dropped down to 1.53 million in December of 2015 under President Barack Obama. He get now nobody talks about the fact that the U.S. prison population dropped to its lowest point in 20 years under President Obama. Very few people know that or talk about that. I don't know why. Okay, you talk about you you talk about the First Step Act that led about what four or five thousand people out of prison. But you don't talk about the U.S. prison population dropped from a peak of about 2.3 million down to 1.53 million under President Obama. The percentage of African Americans in prison dropped from 40 percent down to 30, uh, from 40 percent down to 34 percent under President Obama. Trump gets Trump. Trump takes credit for the First Step Act, and he wasn't even a champion. He wasn't even advocating for the First Step Act or criminal justice reform when he was running for president. And then during midterm elections, 2018, he wasn't advocating for the First Step Act. Because when he was on the campaign trail, he wasn't pushing the First Step Act. Not only that, he withdrew his support in the article showing this. After, after he did, after he had the meeting with the black preachers, like Pastor John Gray, okay? After he had the meeting with the black preachers and he got his photo out with them. Then after that, he withdrew his support from the First Step Act 
and said we should pick this up after midterm elections. That's what he did. Okay? So, when we look at this example here, we see that these pension funds were financing these privatized prison companies. The trustees of the city's pension funds voted in favor of divesting in mid-May 2017. The stocks and bonds in three companies, GO Group, Core Civic, and G4S, have since been sold. In a statement, a representative for the GO Group uh, privatized prison company said, quote, we strongly reject the baseless claims that led to this misguided decision. We're proud of our long-standing record providing high-quality services while treating the men and women in our care with the respect and dignity they deserve, end quote. Now, I don't know specifically about GEO Group, but I do know in general privatized prisons don't save money in general for the, for the states. One. Two, they have a higher incidence of uh, uh, civil rights abuses and, and things like this, okay? The trustees first voted to study divesting from privatized prisons in September, 2000, oh, September 2016. The trustees can only divest after an analysis determines doing so would add minimal or no risk to the pension funds. An outside consultant and outside consultants um, and outside consultant, consultants also found that maintaining investments in the industry brought about quote, inherent investment risk, end quote, given ongoing investigations into the industry that can damage the value of the stocks and bonds, end quote, uh, uh, Stringer's office said. So this is one example here of understanding how we are financing our own dehumanization and understanding how to fight back. They actually did it. This is not theory. This is what they actually did. When we go look at two, in, in 2012, this was the first real example of, our, of, of me seeing people actually do this. 2012, in the state of California, the California, the teachers in California have the largest pension fund in the country. At the time, it was about $155 billion invested in the, teacher, in, in, in the pension fund. These are teachers in California. They found out that part of their pension fund do uh, dollars were invested in three gun manufacturers because a lot of people are invested in gun manufacturers and don't know it through pension funds and through 401k plans, things like this. I'm not against pension funds and 401k plans. What I'm, what I'm saying is we need to investigate what types of businesses we are investing in because oftentimes we can be financing our own dehumanization and financing things that we are actually against and we don't know we're financing, financing this. So what happened was the teachers found out that they were invested in these gun manufacturers. One of the gun manufacturers at the time was the um, manufacturer that made the Bushmaster AR-15 assault rifle that was used in the 2012 Sandy Hook shooting of the school children in Sandy Hook. So the teachers organized and they divested their pension fund dollars from these um, gun manufacturers. Okay, Prior to that, I had heard Reverend Al Sharpton talk about this, but I had not seen an example of it. Because he was talking about they should do this in New York. That, that's going back to, I think, probably like 2000. 2008 2010 on his radio show I remember him talking about this but when this happened in 2012 this was the first actual example of I saw of people actually doing this once it's done it's no longer theory all you all you have to do is study how they did it and replicate it so I so I first heard this story of the teachers in California on CNN in 2012 and I followed the story for a number of years to see what happened because there was one, it took them maybe three years or so to divest from the, the one last gun manufacturer. Okay, but they were able to do that as well. But a lot of people don't know that you can do this. 
Um, so if we look at, I have a, a number of articles bookmarked on this topic here, but if we look at one from Huffington Post, this is from June 8th, 2016, California Teachers Pension Fund Divest from Weapon Maker. California Teachers Pension Fund Divest from Weapon Maker. The largest, the largest teachers pension fund in the world plans to end its indirect investment in Remington Outdoor Assault Weapon Manufacturer after two years of urging for divestment. The California State Teachers Retirement System announced on Friday that it agreed to a proposal by its private equity partner uh, Cerberus Capital Management. Um, the California State Teachers Retirement System also known as CalSTRS C-A-L-S-T-R-S, along with State Treasurer John Chiang, had urged Cerberus to sell or at least sell CalSTRS indirect interest in Remington Outdoor, formerly called the Freedom Group, since April 2013, when the Teachers Retirement Board committed to divesting from firearm manufacturers. Initially, the pension fund eliminated $3 million in public equity stocks from Smith & Wesson and Stern Rugger, the two gun manufacturers. But divestment from Remington Outdoor proved more difficult to achieve. Now, uh, Cal, uh, Cal Sturr's chief executive officer, Jack uh, Enes, uh, E-H-N-E-S, e -H -E -H -N -E -S, said in a statement, quote, in the more than two years since our decision to divest, we have exhausted every effort to urge Cerberus to sell, end quote. But long story short, they were able to divest from uh, this last gun manufacturer as well, Remington Outdoor. The pension fund has about $525 million invested in two Cerberus funds, Disclosing the specific value of indirect holdings such as Remington Outdoors would violate the fund's private equity agreements. Okay, but you can read uh, this article and you can Google this topic here, right? But this is dealing with economic empowerment. This is dealing with leveraging your economics to enforce a political agenda as well. All of this is interconnected. Okay, we take principles from Kwanzaa. We take principles of Kwanzaa, then we look at practical applications of these principles of Kwanzaa, of the economic empowerment. Okay? Whether we talk about the Kwanzaa crawl, and then we deal with self-determination, we deal with unity, okay? And all this ties into self-respect because what you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself, right? So, so it's one thing for people to mistreat you and disrespect you. It's another thing for you to tolerate and finance. Okay, so check out this article also from, uh, this is from Huffington Post. California Teachers Pension Fund divests from, weapon make, from a weapon maker. This ties into this as well, okay? All right, let me look at some of your comments here. In an African American business owner's post name your business here on the third of the broadcast, we'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network as well. Email us at customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Uh, current promotion buy one month, get two months free. We have special pricing right now for a few more days. We have a few slots left to kick off the new year. And listen to the audio podcast of our shows as well. Wherever you get your podcast from, search for the African History Network show. We're on Stitcher, iTunes, Blog Talk Radio, CastBox, Acast, FM Player. Um, you can go to um, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com right on the home page. Click on Listen to Podcasts. And uh, we put your 30-second to 60-second audio commercial into the audio podcast of our uh, broadcast that we do as well. Okay? All right, uh, visit uh, workingwithjohnray.com. Uh, John Ray is the executive vice president with My Econ, which is the personal uh, finance success company. 
uh, and he teaches about a concept called income shifting. Now, income shifting takes your money back from those who are taking it from you. That's thousands of dollars saved. Plus, um, uh, my econ shows you how to earn more. Okay, income shifting deals with a group of financial strategies that uh, took John Ray from living from paycheck to paycheck to investing and not focusing on where his next paycheck is coming from. Visit his website, workingwithjohnray.com, workingwithjohnray.com for more information. And uh, also, uh, you can uh, call him or text him, 248-929-2447, And uh, we'll post the link here as well because they have a video at... Um, the website for my econ also okay all right okay guys look hey uh listen to the african history network show sundays 9 p.m to 11 p.m eastern standard time on 9 10 a.m the superstation wfdf we broadcast here on our facebook fan page the african history network also follow us uh on our fan page the african history network on facebook and our youtube channel michael m hotel i m h o t e p on uh youtube and uh, also at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, all of my DVD lectures are there. So all this helps support and finance the research, uh, helps support the African History Network, helps us keep doing the research, stay on the air, pay the bills, uh, helps cover expenses when I have to travel out of town as well. Okay, uh, our current, uh, our, our latest DVD bundle pack is the Black Migration 1619 to 2019 bundle pack. We have it in DVD format and digital download format. Uh, so the digital download I think is $45, DVD is $50, includes six of my latest presentations, including six principles of political self-defense, understanding how laws and policies impact the economic conditions of African Americans, and uh, also Black Migrations, 1619 to 2019. Um, and Black Migrations was the uh, annual theme for African American History Month in 2019, okay? And that dealt with the uh, forced migration and voluntary migration of African Americans. So not just the transatlantic slave trade, but also the great migration of uh, 1915 to 1970. We had six million African Americans migrating from the south and up north. All right. Uh, also, you can donate to the African History Network. Uh, we have Cash App now, dollar sign, D-A-H-N show uh, through Cash App. We just posted a link here. Um, and then uh, also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, or at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Click on the yellow donate button uh, there, and you can set it up. You can do a one time donation or recurring donation. You want to do $15, $25, $50, $100, dollars, whatever it is. Uh, you can do a one time, or you can set up for a recurring monthly donation also. Okay, so we have Felicia. Um, okay, how you doing, Felicia? Uh, Yvonne, okay. Uh, let's see who else we have here. Okay, we got John, Vincent. Um, okay, <laughs> yeah. So follow, follow, read the articles that I post here on on our fan page, the African History Network. I post articles throughout the day. I've been dealing with. Uh, uh, Trump launching attacks against Iraq, okay, and his uh, attacks on Iran as well, and his his language um, threatening to attack 52 cultural sites, which is a violation of international law. That is a war crime, okay. Um, the, the and we see Secretary of uh, State Mike Pompeo is uh, trying to cover for him and not going along with uh, attacking uh, those cultural sites saying we're going to uh, uh, follow the law. We see um, the Secretary of, uh, Secretary of Defense uh, Esper um, uh, basically saying that they're going to follow the law and they're not going to do that. Okay, I warned you about Trump in 2016 before the election. He's a, he, he's a lunatic. He does not have the right temperament to be president. That's too much power for someone crazy to have. And at the same time, he's trying to distract away from this, from this looming impeachment trial in the U.S. Senate that Senator Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham are trying to 
help him get a quick acquittal in as well. But more information is coming out. We just saw that former National Security Advisor John Bolton says he will testify if he's subpoenaed. Trump does not want John Bolton to testify. Okay. And, you know, the, the, uh, 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 Mitch McConnell says he has enough Republican votes to begin Trump's trial without witnesses. Mitch McConnell doesn't really want to have witnesses. Okay. Lindsey Graham has made it clear he doesn't want to have any witnesses. So, once again, this is an example of how elections have consequences. Because if people in Kentucky back in 2012, when they had the last senatorial election, really understood uh, Senator Mitch McConnell, you would have more people voting and vote him out of office. Lindsey Graham, now Mitch McConnell's up for re-election in 2020, so is Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham's challenger, Jamie Har uh, Harrison, just raised $3.5 million in the fourth quarter of 2019 for, for the senatorial election. Lindsey Graham has a real fight on his hands. And, and Jamie Harrison is African-American. you got a lot of African-Americans in South Carolina who vote Democratic. So in South Carolina and also people in Kentucky they have to organize to get these two jackasses out of office okay because these two idiots are dangerous not only that Mitch McConnell and I've talked about this before Senator Mitch McConnell is the Senate Majority Leader he controls the Senate so no vote can come to the Senate floor for a debate and no 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 bill can come to the Senate floor for a debate and no bill can come to the Senate floor for a vote without his approval. So there have been almost 400 bills that Democrats have passed in the House of Representatives since January 3, 2019, when Democrats took, took control of the U.S. House of Representatives. About 80% of those bills are being blocked in the Senate by Mitch McConnell and Republicans. They're either... Uh, uh, um, uh, Nancy Pelosi said there are about 275 bills that are on his desk waiting to be voted on, waiting to be debated on. He's blocking all that. Senator Mitch McConnell also said that reparations is dead on arrival in the U.S. Senate. He, he also said reparations is dead on arrival in the U.S. Senate. It's not up for debate. If, 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 if a bill passes the House of Representatives dealing with reparation, it's going to die in the Senate. It's not up for debate. It's not going to be voted on. So this is, this is one senator that has all this power. A lot of people don't, seem, don't like, seem to understand how the Senate works and the power that the Senate Majority Leader has. So one... Mitch McConnell has to be voted out of office in 2022. Democrats have to take back control of the Senate so you can get these bills that the House is passing. You can get these bills passed in the Senate. And then, they, and then you need a president who's going to sign them into law. Now, I'm neither Democrat nor Republican, but I study a lot of these bills. And I see, and, and I see who are the obstructionists. And I see who are passing bills that are beneficial to us in general. There's some I disagree with, but in general, who 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 is it that's passing bills that are beneficial to us? And then I see who are who who is it that are blocking bills that are beneficial to us? Then I see who is it that is running through and getting all these federal judges confirmed who are Trump's nominations. He's gotten 187 federal judges confirmed as of uh, the end of. Um, end of uh, December 2019, 187 federal judges. Many of them totally unqualified. American Bar Association has come out against some of them and said this person is totally unqualified to be a federal judge. Many of them anti-civil rights. And they are nominating, Trump is nominating very young, ultra-conservative, mostly white males. They just had the first African-American female judge. She's from Michigan. She, uh, she got confirmed out of 186. That's one African-American female judge confirmed. 
And these are lifetime appointments. So they can be on the federal bench for the next 25, 30, 35, 40 years. It's a lifetime appointment. So we don't, we don't understand how many of us don't understand how detrimental this is. Okay? Because a lot of cases that go before the federal bench and then the federal appeals court and the federal appeals court is right below U.S. Supreme Court. Trump has gotten confirmed one out of four federal judges. Um, check out the... So when we deal with cases like uh, affirmative action cases, like affirmative action in college, when we deal with cases like... Uh, dealing with unions and, org and collective bargaining organ um, collective bargaining powers and rights of unions and things like this when those get challenged in the court or when we deal with the Affordable Health Care Act that's in the courts right now that's at the appeal I think it's at the appeals level in the court right now then it goes to the US Supreme Court if the Supreme Court decides to take it up we we don't understand how damaging this is and these judges are there for life. Um, it, Vox dot com had a good article dealing with um, how House Democrats have passed uh, nearly four hundred bills. House Democrats have passed nearly four hundred bills. Trump and Republicans are ignoring them. This is from November twenty ninth, two thousand nineteen. Read this, and they list out some of the, uh, some of the bills as well. To keep track of these bills, go to govtrack.us. Govtrack.us. Uh, okay. And you can uh, keep this is how you can keep track of the bills. You can keep track of where they are, who sponsored them, read about the bill, see where they are in the process, see if they have passed the House of Representatives and if they're in the Senate. Because uh, there's only been about 70 or 80 bills that have passed the House, passed the Senate, and have been signed into law by Trump. Okay, so a lot, of, a lot of people don't understand how all of this impacts us and how politics is the legal distribution of scarce wealth, power, and resources and the writing of laws, statutes, ordinances, amendments, and treaties, the adoption, interpretation, and enforcement, and how this impacts us on a daily basis. Everything from this $1.4 trillion tax cut which gave a massive tax cut to the wealthy uh, and, and how many many of us would get a tax refund each year and then 2019 came around and you get a tax refund and you find out you owe money did you thank Donald Trump for that? did you send him a Kwanzaa card? did you send him a Christmas card to thank him for that? but he wants to kick 700,000 people off of SNAP off of food stamps okay so this has wide ranging uh, ramifications okay look hey we have to get out of here remember at the African History Network we focus on educating empowering and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's correct wrong behavior what you do for yourself what you do to yourself and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself what you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself what you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read heard and seen about yourself Remember, right now is correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. Wakanda forever. We'll talk to you next time. Peace.